It's Hyper Halloween. Halloween needs no introduction. It truly is a classic in every sense of the word. Halloween isn't the first slasher film out there, but it's one of the most, if not the most, influential slasher films. It's the slasher film that popularized the slasher genre as we saw in the 1980s. The plot seems tired by today's standards, but back in 1978 it was very new. With things like the final girl trope, the killer going after people that are doing drugs or being sexually promiscuous, and POV from the killer's perspective, we really got a unique slasher film for its time. The story of Halloween starts off in 1963 in Haddonfield, Illinois on Halloween night. We're shown a murder from the killer's perspective. Turns out the killer is a six-year-old child wielding a butcher's knife. That child is Michael Myers and the person he murdered was actually his sister. The film shows that Michael has been locked in a sanitarium for 15 years. Donald Pleasance plays Dr. Loomis, Michael's doctor. Loomis doesn't want Michael to leave the sanitarium because he believes that Michael is pure evil. Michael is allowed to have a hearing regardless and he escapes right before his court date to determine if he should be granted his freedom. Michael kills a mechanic along the way to steal some normal clothes and then he grabs a white mask from the local store. I'm not sure if John Carpenter knew it at the time, but this mask has gone on to become one of the most iconic masks of all time. It's funny though since the mask used in this movie is actually a William Shatner mask that was just painted white. In any case, Michael returns to his home that has long been abandoned. This is where we get introduced to the main hero, Laurie Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Laurie's dad is attempting to sell the house and Michael catches Laurie dropping off the key. Michael stalks Laurie for the rest of the day and it continues from there. We see Laurie tell people about Michael, but they don't believe her, and we see Loomis warn people, but they don't listen. Michael racks up a body count and is ultimately stopped by Loomis, or so we think. Okay, I know I said I wouldn't spoil the ending to any of these films, but this one's a really good ending, so I want to talk about it. When Loomis looks down to where Michael's dead body is supposed to be, uh, he finds that he's gone. The viewers then treat it to a montage of places that Michael has visited while breathing can be heard. This implies that Michael could be anywhere. Halloween has had an interesting history. It had a direct sequel and was eventually going to be part of a Halloween-themed anthology series. Halloween 3 had nothing to do with the first two movies and is considered to be the start of the anthology. Halloween 3, though, was very disliked because it had nothing to do with the first two movies. I really like Halloween 3, but that's just me. We then got three more films, Halloween 4, 5, and The Curse of Michael Myers, that continues the Michael Myers story. Then we get a reboot and a sequel to the reboot with Halloween H2O and Halloween Resurrection. Then there was the Rob Zombie remake and the sequel to that remake, and then another reboot. I believe there are two sequels planned for the newest reboot as well. <laughs> Confusing enough for you yet? Halloween is a great slasher with an interesting legacy. While the sequels didn't always achieve the same greatness of the original, Halloween is a classic that still influences slasher films today. It can be a bit slow at times, but it's still a great watch. Go check it out if you haven't seen it, and with that being said, trick or treat, motherfucker.